Sit down. <laughs> Subscribe. Sit down. Enjoy. I've been listening to a lot of Kendrick Lamar. How good was he in Glastonbury? Very good. Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence All Good channel. And we're going to talk about Nottingham Forest and how they could become Mahoosive. Spell M-A-H-O-U-S-S-S-I-V-V-E. Mahoosive. Because Nottingham Forest last year absolutely tore it up once Steve Cooper came through the door. Chris Hutton was the original manager. I think a lot of people, myself included, thought that they might make a bit of a charge for the playoffs and that they might have the squad to do so. But a lot of it was down to Chris Hutton. He was disappointing. Steve Cooper was not. He was very, very impressive. And they became one of the most exciting teams to watch in the championship. Some really impressive loan signings that got them into the Premier League. But... That leads to a sticking point because some of these loan signings will not return. And so despite being a very strong team and probably one of the best pound for pound teams in the championship and the most watchable as well, unless you're a Derby County fan. If you're a Derby County fan, you do not enjoy Nottingham Forest right now. Kick a Muller down. Not me, I mean Forest. But now with Steve Cooper looking like he's going to sign a new deal, at the time of recording he hasn't done so, but that leads us to think that Steve Cooper will be backed in the transfer window and so far they've only signed Mohamed Drager from FC Luzerne in Switzerland who's probably his second choice right wing back and of course our Nii who on this channel we said Brighton should go and sign but they didn't hurry up and get it done so instead Nottingham Forest went and got him he's going to be a really interesting asset that does affect the other assets and those loan signings that we were speaking about last year let's dive into this have a look at the money available the weaknesses and strengths of Nottingham Forest how they need to strengthen and some players that could do exactly that to allow them to become Mahusin Let's start off with money available. Now, this is really interesting because the Daily Mirror, and the Daily Mirror wouldn't lie or guess, they're saying 50 million. But I just wonder, I think the fact that Steve Cooper is going to sign that contract has got to be music to the ears of Nottingham Forest fans because that means that they are going to back him. And Steve Cooper is very demanding and incredibly ambitious. And I think he knows what he will need to keep this team in the Premier League this season and then allow them to look to, to make those strides as the seasons progress, hopefully in the Premier League. He doesn't want to bounce back down. It's not You can't bounce down, can you? Let me know in the comments below how if you can bounce down and if you can't, what, what am I trying to say? Let me know in the comments below. I'm incredibly tired. So it will be music to the ears of Nottingham Forest fans. Um, so with that in mind, you know, some people shout in 100 million. I mean, that, that feels like too much, but... I think upwards of 60, 70 million because you're going to need those reinforcements and a few smart loan moves as well. The first and most glaring weakness for Nottingham Forest is the gold contributions and the amount of departures that take with them those gold contributions from last season. The departures of Keenan Davis, James Garner, Philip Zinkenagel, great name, and Jed Spence, all really, really important in the attacking third. These players have scored a total of 17 goals between them and assisted a total of 21 goals as well. So that's a lot of attacking influence that you are going to need to replace. And I think the second problem that kind of jumps on the back of that, piggybacks if you will, is the fact that this isn't just one player who scored 17 goals for you and provided 15 15 assists who's moved on like a Buendia who's a, you know was a big loss for Nor Norwich last season but they didn't truly kind of replace him or they tried to replace him with four different players this is four separate players and so it's up to you guys I don't know how you feel about it but I think that actually makes it harder to replace all four of them as a p and make the step up to the Premier League as opposed to just one player making way. Not only have they lost goal contributions, they've also lost players that kind of make them tick a little bit. You know, think of James Garner. He registered two or more key passes per 90 when he played. It was so important in terms of, you know, keeping the ball, getting the ball as well in that perfect midfield with Yates. Keenan Davis as well in terms of his pivotal chance creation that he provided 1.7 key passes per 90 as well davis was also the best player when it came to progressive carries in central areas 2.5 successful dribbles per game at a success rate of 73 percent so it's hard to uncover 
other weaknesses down to a few reasons. So first of all, you know, the fact that it is a step up and, and ultimately there will be players that kind of sink swim in that scenario. The second thing is that it was about the collective a lot of the time, but with those players that have gone that we've spoken about, what that means is it leaves two problems. With those players being so important, it means you've got to replace those important players with players just as good, if not better, because you're going into a better league. And then after that, you need to solve those other problem areas that you weren't able to sort of paper over with loan moves last season. So three areas to strengthen we've been doing generally on this series, but with Nottingham Forest, there's actually a few more. So getting it down to three is one thing, but let's just go through all of the problems that Nottingham Forest currently have as they make the step up into the, the big league. First of all, the left wing back spot is a problem area for Nottingham Forest. Colback was good there last year. Kind of, is he makeshift? Is that his level at the championship? Also, is it the fact that he had Jed Spence on the other side that you could kind of utilize a midfielder in that left wing back position? All of the above, I think, are correct. But is he able to step into the Premier League? I guess the question there is who do you replace on the right hand side? But left wing back, I think it would be smart to bring forward someone who's Premier League proven and who is a natural left wing back. You've got Max Lowe, who is a natural left wing back, but I'm not convinced that he's Premier League standard as of yet. And it's a lot of pressure to put into someone who hasn't been a starter last season. Another position that I alluded to was that right wing back position there. And I think that is an area that you're going to have to strengthen at the moment. The sort of the numbers don't fit totally with Tottenham and Nottingham Forest in terms of their estimations on him. But I th still think it's something that will get done. The interest hasn't totally cooled. And I think Jed Spence will get picked up sooner or later. I do not expect him to sign or re-sign for Nottingham Forest this summer. Next position is centre half. It's going to be so important that they're defensively very sound this season. Nottingham Forest just to give themselves that that opportunity and a lot of teams that do do well going up play that a little bit more direct maybe a bit of a catanat chow at the back looking to counter attack but also having a lot of big bodies that can get you goals from set pieces like at Brentford last season so in terms of center backs I think Worrell is good enough I think he obviously deserves that opportunity as well you know Cook has that experience but two more center backs would be very useful to to turn this into a Premier League back three if that is what Steve Cooper wants to do again I'd be surprised if he moved away from a back three the central midfield spot vacated by James Garner is actually a bit of a chasm really for, for Nottingham Forest stepping up because in all three thirds of the pitch as well as you know with the ball without the ball and technically as well James Garner was just so so good for Nottingham Forest so that's another area that they must must strengthen to get any kind of control over a football match and finally in that number 10 role a versatile striker forward attacking midfielder like Zinkenagel is something that needs to be replaced as well as I said I think that times Nottingham Forest will inevitably be playing quite deep at times when they're playing against opponents that are dominating the game so a dribbler that can get on the ball and affect the game will be really important to replace someone like Zinkanagel. Well, let's talk early summer links and some transfers as well. Starting off, I guess, with Taiwo Awaniyi. Now, this is a cracking signing for me because I feel like this is an upgrade on Keenan Davis. And Keenan Davis was really, really good in the championship. He hasn't really done it in the Premier League as of yet, Keenan Davis, but I think it's, it's all part of his development. And I think he'll, he'll make it back to the big leagues, be it with Aston Villa or, or elsewhere. But with... Our knee, I just think this guy is really, really perfect for what they want. Coming from a team that's very counter-attacking in Union Berlin. 15 goals last season in the Bundesliga. Union Berlin did brilliantly as well. Really smart with his pressing actually as well and his pressing lines as well. Able to drive with the ball, hold up the ball. Really clever finisher as well. I think this could be one of the signings of the season. An early shout for that, but I'm really, really impressed with that. We actually recommended our knee for Brighton in the one transfer every Premier League team needed back on the 22nd of December. Brighton didn't get him over the line, Nottingham Forest did, and it could be huge for them. Literally, I mean, the guy's massive. Elsewhere in terms of incomings, Joe Roden. Seems like the preferred option to join as a central centre-back for their three at the back. His performances for Wales will definitely not have gone unnoticed by Steve Cooper. Could also join on loan, which is something to watch out for. Musa Niakate, left-footed centre-back and is captain of Mainz, would be a brilliant signing for their back three. Nico Williams linked with Forrest as an option to replace Jed Spence. I can see why Steve Cooper likes him, having worked at Liverpool's academy whilst Williams was coming through the ranks. Of course, there's the Wales link there as well. 
And Morgan Gibbs White, linked with a move for roughly around 20 million, would be a clever signing to fill in that hole left by Zinconagel, who has returned from his loan to Watford. I like the Morgan Gibbs White one as well. Obviously, there's the link with Steve Cooper and England back in the day, the under 17s, I think it was with Steve Cooper. And of course, I think in terms of that, that number 10 role, but also someone maybe with that little bit more physicality, a bit more built like a midfielder for a team that's going to play in transition and might have to defend that little bit more i like morgan gibbs white as a good option here and then a couple of outgoings for nottingham forest aside from those loan moves brennan johnson with the forward basically being the championship and bappe last season it's obvious he'd have interest in him by virtually every premier league club however it still isn't clear if he'll leave now that Forrest are in the Premier League. And Bryce Samba, the news that Bryce Samba wanted out of Forrest came as a big surprise to the fans as he's a cult hero at Forrest and cemented his status with his performance between the sticks in the penalty shootout versus Sheffield United. Brennan Johnson in particular is a really interesting one here because the guy's really special, but the contract situation for him means that I wonder if the smart thing for him to do is go, look, you're in the Premier League, get some clauses in place, we'll put two years on it so that you're going to get some money out of it as well of course he's come through the ranks at Nottingham Forest and that way everybody wins if you get relegated you can move on and the club can still get a little bit of cash but you yourself will get that experience of playing week in week out with a World Cup on the horizon in the Premier League so having looked at those early links, it feels like the centre-back position, they're being pretty aggressive in what they want to do there. I like the options as well. And Nico Williams is a right wing-back. They seem in hot pursuit of him as well. So if that can get done, it'd be interesting to see if Fulham are still looking at him and want to get him over the line after him doing so brilliantly at Fulham last year. But if they can get him, then those are two areas that you don't have to worry about as much. It does feel like a lot of Welsh players are looking to make their way to work under Steve Cooper. But let's put forward then a left wing back, a centre midfielder and a number 10 as different options for Nottingham Forest. OK, let's start off with the left wing back options. Owen Weindahl, 22 years old, is still somehow at AZ Alkmaar. I think a couple of years ago we put forward him to go to Leeds United as a obviously a left back left wing back option and that was when he was only 20 now 22 he's a really really talented player and I'm really amazed that no one's picked him up as of yet because I think people are actually quite enticed by the Dutch if you know what I mean <laughs> sounds weird doesn't it in terms of like wanting to bring in those players because they are generally well educated players and have that understanding of the game and I think he would be brilliant in this Steve Cooper setup as a wing back because he'd have that little bit more freedom. Last season, he did brilliantly again for AZ Alkmaar. 10 assists in 31 matches. Excellent output. I think he would just really, really kill it for Steve Cooper if they were able to get him. Cost 15 million, 20 million maybe at a push. So that is a chunky bit of your budget. But I think... I think it would really, really help the balance of this team and, and give them more threats than having that elbow and just going down one side and being a bit more narrow on the other side. Actually, it'll give you that option to, to go down either side with two exciting wingbacks. Second option in the left wingback position, Andrea Cambiasso, 20 years old from Genoa. Now, this is a bit more of a, a gamble. This is a 20-year-old, of course, as well, and hasn't got the same amount of games as, as someone like Weindahl. But he's a talent, and he's going under the radar. And I think that's what sometimes the teams that get promoted or the teams in the bottom half of the Premier League have got to do to kind of compete really when it comes to the Premier League defensively there, there's some concerns there in terms of balls over the top with him on that left hand side and so that addition new addition as a centre back maybe Scott McKenna's up to it but that left sided centre back is going to have to cover for him at times but in terms of progressive carries 6.99 progressive carries per 90 in Serie A last season that's the top 11% in Europe's top 5 leagues so it's an aspect of Jed Spence's makeup that you're most likely going to lose, of course. And so you might be able to kind of transfer it and have it over on that left-hand side to have someone who can drive with the ball like he can. As I say, bit of a gamble, but Steve Cooper working with young potential, I think that's always a really, really smart move and, and probably should be the, the idea going into this season to see, yes, it might be one of those where they, they go down and come back up, but if you've got... 20 year olds and 21 year olds you're giving them that experience and Steve Cooper's doing what Steve Cooper does which makes them brilliant you're going to buy an asset like this for 8 to 10 million I would say which is kind of pretty cheap these days isn't it and you're going to get someone who you're going to sell for a higher value down the line 
Right, let's talk about the centre midfield reinforcements and replacing Garner in particular. This first shout is such a great shout. It needs to happen. He would be perfect for Nottingham Forest and brings a lot of what Garner you know, offered last season. 23 years old, Lewis O'Brien from Huddersfield. He has to be playing in the Premier League now. He needs to be making that step up. He has relentless energy. He's a shuttle runner. Has a little bit of everything in terms of the, you know, the, the sort of swagger to come, come and get on the ball, but also wants to drive with the ball, wants to get beyond. Like, he just makes tackles. Like, he's been linked with West Ham and that would be such a West Ham signing that he would go there, might take him a year to come acclimatise to the Premier League, but then absolutely thrive the year after. I just really, really rate him. Also played in a double pivot with Jonathan Hogg, so would come into this team and play alongside Ryan Yates and would be in a double pivot and would be incredibly comfortable doing it. So not too dissimilar tactically as well. Really, really smart signing. Go and get it done. 12 million let's say. Huddersfield Town fans, I'm sure there's a few of you watching. Let me know, how much would Lewis O'Brien cost uh, for you guys to let him go? And you go, okay, fair enough. Second option, this is we're going to utilise what Steve Cooper does, which is to develop players really, really well and go and get someone from a big team, but someone who has already impressed in the championship but needs to make that step up now into Premier League football. It's Tommy Doyle, 20 years old, and Cardiff City fans will attest to this. Went and had a six-month loan with Cardiff last season and was fantastic. Ten big chances created in 17 games. And this is from a guy who doesn't play in a number 10 role. He's more of like an eight or a six, which is exactly what needs replacing for Nottingham Forest. Key thing to say here, this would have to be a loan move. You're not going to be able to buy this guy outright. But, you know, that's not a bad thing. Look at Crystal Palace last year, Conor Gallagher going there on loan. You're still getting everything you need. You're staying in the division. You're bringing in all that money that comes with it. By any means necessary has to be the MO for Nottingham Forest this year. Now for the Zinconagel replacement, that number 10. Lovro Meyer is the first option. We're putting forward 24 years old. Current club is Stad Rene. And this is a guy who's like, football hipsters kind of know about him at the moment, but he will be on people's radar pretty, pretty soon because statistically he's, I mean, he's really, really impressive. Super impressive for a number 10. Look, you want output. You want him to be ticking all those boxes. But again, at the same time, you've got to have someone who you're able to get, right? So this guy would cost about 20 million, uh, Mayer. But look at his shot creating actions, 4.27. Shot creating actions per 90, 4.27. I mean, that's really strong. And then when you add to that, progressive carries. 8.33 progressive carries per 90. Having that in your locker and having that as an option to relieve pressure, to create chances, to take a player out of the game and then to start a counter-attack with the other players that are going to come through the door and going into a Premier League season where, again, you're going to be one of the teams down the bottom half. It's about space versus possession and you need to be able to take a player out of the game and then to utilise all that space that will be in front of them. And if you've got Brendan Johnson and the fantastic little movements and runs that he makes and the pace that he has... If you've got someone like Mayer through the door, he would cost the same amount as Gibbs White, quite possibly. And they're both similar players and both good options. So if you can't get Gibbs White, maybe someone like Mayer would be a great option in that number 10 role. Second option, Elif Elmas, 22 from Napoli. Now, I don't know, some people might be thinking, why would a player go from Napoli to Nottingham Forest? Not me. And nor should Elmas as well, because he's not really had the fair crack of the whip at Napoli so far. Only 12 starts last season and most of his appearances actually came from the bench. What's really great about him, he's got a little Berbatov vibe about him and if you've seen him for Macedonia you can see he's just got great elegance, physicality, good on the ball, able to dribble with the ball as well. They bought him for 40 million in 2019 so they'd want to kind of get their money back so it probably cost about 15, 16, between 14 and 20 million at a push. But I think for Elmas, First of all, him going from Napoli, where he's not starting, to going to Nottingham Forest, you know, what spotlight being on you, being in the Premier League, I think would be a great move for him. From Nottingham Forest's point of view is, okay, yes, you're buying a player from a, a team that dominates most of its games, and that can be a dangerous thing. But because he plays for North Macedonia, there have been games where they aren't as dominant. I know they've qualified for tournaments, but he will know what it's like to be that other team. And I think that's actually quite a useful sort of element of experience that he will have that some players might not have, especially a, a number 10, a mercurial number 10. So I think he would be a really, really good option as well. But either way, for that number 10, you're going to have to spend a, a little bit of money this summer.